This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to take a look at how to solve a system of equations, and we're going to use a special technique, and our technique is going to be called reduced row echelon form. Now, this method is uh, a very uh, simple method to use because it doesn't involve very, uh, actually, any algebra. Uh, and so the only thing you need to know is how to use a calculator. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to do this using a TI Inspire calculator, uh, which I'll pull up in a moment. All right, well, the first thing you have to do uh, when you do a problem like this is uh, separate the letters from the numbers. So you'll notice that for this particular problem, we have two equations here. we got two unknowns, x's and y's. Uh, you can see that there are six numbers. There's 3, negative 2, negative 16, there's negative 5, 7, and 34. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take away those uh, letters and equations and I'm just going to use the six numbers that we see there. And what I'm going to do is form what's called a matrix. And I'm going to plug that information into a matrix. Alright, so uh, the numbers I'm going to take are uh, 3, negative 2, negative 16. I'm going to take the negative 5, 7, and 34, and I'm going to form what's called a matrix. And I'm going to put these in what's just an organized list. It's actually an organized list with uh, uh, rows, and then there's columns. Remember, columns go up and down, columns hold up buildings. Think of it that way, help you uh, remember that. Now the only way you could form this specific matrix that I have here is that your equations have to be in a very special form. So you have to have your uh, letters on one side of the equation, you got to have your constant terms or your non-lettered values on the right side of the equations, and you also have to have your x's in the first column and y's in the second column, or whatever variable you have. So the, whatever variable you're dealing with, that variable has to be in the first column, and then the second variable has to be in the second column. So once you have it in this very specialized, organized way, you can then form your matrix. And just by plucking out those numbers, leaving the equations and letters behind. Okay, so we have this matrix. And now what we need to do is to plug this matrix into a calculator. So I'm going to pull up a calculator and show you how to do that. And of course, I'm just using the Inspire. So this is a Texas Instruments calculator. This is the TI Inspire. And specifically, this is a CAS model. There are uh, a couple other models out there. So they are all slightly different. OK, so the first thing you do is you get a new uh, menu, or I'm sorry, you don't click the menu, you get the home button and you want a new document. And so I'm not going to save anything that's been opened in the past, and I'm going to get a calculator. Okay, so that's the next feature I'm going to use. So I'm using the calculator feature of this computer, because that's really what it is, a handheld computer. Alright, now I need to pull up the matrix, right? So I'm going to use this button right here, and I need this matrix right there. So I click on that and they ask me, all right, well, what do you need? Well, I only had two equations, that's two rows, and I had three columns, so that should be good. Okay, so now it's exactly the same dimensions that I'm looking for. So I'm going to put those numbers in. So of course that was three. This one's going to be uh, negative two. This one is a negative 16. And let's see, this is a negative 5. The next one was a 7. And this one was a 34. Okay, so uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, people use the keypad to go back and forth to move your way around. I guess I didn't show that. I was clicking on the screen, kind of doing a hybrid model. Uh, but basically use the keypad to move your way around the matrix. Okay, when you're done, you go to the end, hit enter, and it says, OK, I'm all stored into the computer. And now what we want to do is use the built-in feature called reduced row echelon form. And the way you find it is in a pretty logical place. You press menu, 
where is it? Well, well, we're dealing with matrices, right? So it's under matrix. Oops, I'm over here in that menu. So uh, I'm going to go down to matrix, and let's see which part of matrices do I want? I want reduced row echelon form. Okay, not the row echelon. I want reduced row echelon form. Okay, so it pulls up the RREF and it has little parentheses here and it's waiting. It's waiting for us to put that matrix inside the parentheses. So what I do is I use the up arrow and you'll notice that it highlighted this matrix. And so what you do is you press enter. That's kind of like a copy paste. You press enter and it slips that whole thing right in there. So now we have that matrix in there and I want to find the reduced row echelon form of that matrix. I press enter. Okay, now the you can see the computer did an extremely quick job of coming up with the answer. Okay, now I want you to be able to understand this answer. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about what this means and I'm going to go back to the page I was working on. Alright, so what did the calculator spit out? Well, once we did the reduced row echelon form, it gave us these values, if you recall. I don't know if you wrote them down, but I did. Okay, so it gives us this. So I'm going to interpret what this means. So when we, it did its magic, because that's what it looks like, it did its magic and it comes up with this, it gives us actually the answer. This is the answer right here. This is the x value, and this is the y value. And I want to understand or explain to you why that is. Because if I were to put back the letters, remember the first column were the x's, the second column were the y's. Really what this means, if I were to return it back to an equation form, it means I've got one x, I've got no y's. Right? I've got no y's. In other words, there's no y's there. So why even bother writing them, right? Okay, so I've got no y's equals negative 4. Okay, now for the bottom equation, it says I have no x's, but I've got one y. And it says it's equal to 2. Okay, so there's no zero, no uh, y's for the first equation. There were no x's on the second equation. And there you go. That's what this is telling you. It's telling you that x is equal to negative 4 and y is equal to 2. What most people do is they just grab the last column and then that just tells you the answer right there that x is negative 4 and y is 2 because it's always in an ordered pair. We're always looking for an x and a y value. Okay, so that's basically how you use the calculator. And I do understand that every calculator works slightly differently. I, I do get that. They're all a little bit different, but that's basically how you do it with uh, using a calculator, which is extremely easy. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos and our instructional, uh, our instructional videos and our quizzes. Take care.